Ron, Josh Georges can leave scouts and managers shaking their heads over how they missed him. 30 teams passed on him in the draft, and now nine years into his career, he's a stopper for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, much of his focus tonight will be on trying to make the life of Dustin Tokarski easier. What's Watson, Saskatchewan famous for? Dustin Tokarski. <laughs> I couldn't trick you. You knew. No, I knew. A Western guy. We we uh, we keep in touch, and, and when he came up, I I made sure to to get to know him, uh, where he's from, um, where he stays in the summer, things like that. Uh, you know, he played out in Spokane in the Western League, and I, I knew of him then, so uh, I tried to get to know him as much as I could. So the Canadians have life in this series largely because of the performance of a 24-year-old goaltender uh, who, before he got the call for Game Two, had played a total of 10. NHL games. What do you think of Dustin Tokarski's story? He's been outstanding for us. I mean, that's a that's a tough situation for for anybody to come into uh, and, and play. Um, but for a guy with not a lot of experience, a, a young player, uh, to to handle himself the way he's handled himself, uh, to deal with the the pressures of playing in one Montreal, two New York, dealing with media. He's, he's had himself like a true pro. Here comes Carl Hagelin, hangs on, saint -Louis, hit the side of the net, now it's in the goal! I should have stayed right out of his way, he probably would have made the save and, and, and that would have been done with it, you know, if I didn't crash into him, uh, you know, maybe that, that goal doesn't go in. You have become one of the best shot blockers in the league and that very nearly cost you dearly in February 2010 when you took a slap shot from Mike Green of Washington right to the head. And, knocked you out. Uh, what do you recall about that incident? You know what, I remember everything about it. Um, and it always kind of gives me chills when I think about it because uh, it scared me at the time. Rolling puck, plays it across. Oh, Green oh, no, it. no, 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 hurry up, get the trainer on the ice. Oh my goodness. It's one of those things where you, you just react. And I think it went off his, the toe of his blade and kind of shot the other way. Hit me in the back of the head. And, and then after that, when I came to, I just remember going, well, it was crazy, I couldn't move. I, I, I thought I was paralyzed for a second there. And once I was able to regain, you know, consciousness and focus, and it was kind of an eye opener to say, okay, you're gonna block shots. Uh, you gotta do it a little smarter than this. You can't leave yourself vulnerable and, and put yourself out there where, where you can get hurt like that. So how did that shot to the head change your approach to getting in the way of shots? Yeah, uh, I think for a couple reasons. One, um, when you lay out flat like that, um, you're vulnerable to get hit anywhere. Sometimes you don't have a choice, you have to do it. It's a, it's a desperation move. But when you lay out like that and you leave your feet, you're taking yourself out of the play too, and uh, it, it can cost you. In the lead up to this series, the Rangers and Canadians couldn't have been more complimentary about each other. So what's happened to the, uh, the smooth, skill-dominated series that most people thought we'd see? We're both fighting for the same thing, the same goal, the same dream. And, and I'm sure they're thinking the same thing as we are, is they're standing in the way of, of us getting to what we want to accomplish. And when you have that mentality, and, and both teams do, it starts to get a little bit built up and, and the emotions start coming out. And when you play them you know, twice, three times, four times, um, you start to find uh, the animosity grow between the two teams. And when you're this close, you respect your opponent, you respect that team, they're, they're a great team, a great organization, but there's always going to be hate out there. They're standing in the way of what we want to accomplish. We see it as this is our group, we have to do what we have to do to survive and, and to play and to win. People can have their judgments on us, um, they can say who they think is going to win and, and, and the odds and everything else, but we don't pay attention to that. Uh, our focus has always been one day at a time, what does this group have to do to be successful tonight?